Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Let's talk about some options for poetry. If you're a poet, then you're probably aware that there has been an increasing trend, a kind of obsession with modern poetry, which is great. So the question you may be asking is, is an audiobook edition an appropriate or worthwhile venture for me as a poet? To address that question, we would really need to first start asking about what your goals are. What are your overall goals? What would you like to achieve in the big picture, not just for the audiobook? I always like to think of an audiobook not just as great entertainment or great opportunity to gain some new knowledge, but really as a point of leverage as well from the author's perspective. And even from the listener's perspective, it's a way to leverage their time to learn something or gain something in a new way. So leverage is a great thing. We should all be doing it. So again, the question of whether a poet should bring their poetry into an audiobook edition is a much larger question and very customized. I will say, however, that one of the cool things about bringing poetry into audio is that for many readers, poetry is not always immediately understood. I mean, that's one of the beauties of poetry, right? It's deep. It has a very concise and compacted kind of content usually. So by having it performed, either by the poet who wrote it, or by a narrator who understands how to read the poetry, you can add a layer of understanding through the crafting of the spoken word. Spoken word in itself as a kind of genre has also increased. So there's a lot more of that where we have people who are uh, doing poetry jams or spoken word. When we're not in uh, sheltering in place, then in um, in public places where we're listening to each other in a coffee house kind of setting many times. So there's a lot of activity in this poetry kind of world. So I do think that having poetry go into an audio edition is a really valuable thing. Not only can you use it as an audiobook if you're doing a full collection, but you can also use the individual poems as ways to either Uh, be part of a podcast, or to send out through social media to share your work in that way. There's a lot of opportunity out there when you have short pieces like poems. Now let's take a look at what are some of the things that you can do or would need to decide about in production. Many poems rhyme, and many poems don't. When you do have a rhyming poem... You, as the poet, probably have an idea of how you would prefer it to be read, but you might not. You might be really focused on the written word and not be thinking about how it might be performed. One of the first things I'd suggest is deciding whether you want the lines to be read through in a continuous sentence, even though it's going through the end of the line, potentially honoring whatever punctuation you may have, or whether you want it to really be a kind of metered, rhymed experience, da 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 That kind of consistent meter is what many people think of as poetry. But if you're a poet, of course, you, I'm sure, have a much broader view. So there are also poems that may have rhymes at the ends of the line, but that you don't necessarily want to be treated as a line-by-line poem as much as you do as a read through the end of the line to where the next period is or where the next comma is. 
This approach is something that uh, we would frequently come across in something like the Canterbury Tales, for example, where there are rhyming lines, rhyming couplets, but you don't necessarily want to be reading and stopping at the end of each line or even pausing at the end of each line. You really want to follow through with the full thought. Another element of form that is sometimes employed in poetry is shape. Well, shape is very much a visual component and not something that will translate easily to audio. So for that one particular aspect of the form of poetry, if that is critical to the understanding of your poem, then that may not be a good choice for audio. If the shape of the poem adds something to it, but won't make it so that the listener will actually miss the point, right? That they'll still gain the benefit of understanding the poem, even if they don't have the visual shape that you've created, then that's fine. Here's an example of a poem that is written using a visual shape to it, but it is not dependent on the shape. This is a poem by Glennis Redmond, the author of What My Hand Say. Churn. Mama's house holds history high on a shelf where a Carolina clay pot sits. Though I never churned, I yearn to know how my family got over, made our way through working the land, the days that flowed like sweet milk turned golden, soft and easy, mounds of butter. Then the rough days too, without cream, sour days, harder to swallow, coagulated lumps, buttermilk. Into this mahogany vessel, I agitate stories into poems, make food from both the bitter and the sweet. Let's take a short pause and we'll be back to talk about some more aspects of how you might make your poems into an audiobook. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners, as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Another element of the print editions of poems that we often see are images. These may be photographs, they may be drawings, and they may enhance or they may be essential to the understanding of the poem. This is very similar to the shape of the poem we talked about earlier, where that can be a really critical component or it may be just a bonus I immediately think of a Shel Silverstein poem that I know called Loser, where the poem is all about losing his head and the picture shows him sitting on his head. So the poem only really makes sense if you can actually see the image. If you want to include a poem in your audiobook where the image is really important, then you could invite the listener to your website to see the image. But you should also remember that they may be listening in a time or place where it's not convenient for them to do that immediately. You might want to potentially describe the image if it will benefit them, if you think it will make for a good listening experience. One of the really cool things that you can do in an audiobook edition of your poetry is to add music. Music can be a wonderful enhancement to poetry. The trick, of course, is making sure that you're finding music that is a good fit. And that can be challenging. Because if you're putting music to your poetry that isn't the right fit, you may actually be undermining your poetry. 
If you're wondering how you would ever be sure about that, you can really trust your gut. Listen to your poem against the music or read your poem to the music, and I think you'll have a feel for whether it feels right, if it feels good, or not. You can also do the same and have others listen and get their feedback and trust to what your gut is telling you about whether it's a good match. Many times, music, again, will uplift it, will make it even more powerful. Whether it's an uplifting poem or a more melancholy poem that you're adding more melancholy music to, whatever it is that you're trying to create in terms of mood or understanding or images, All of these can be enhanced with the selection of the right kind of music. Let's listen to a sample from Robert A. Wilson's book, Endless Inspiration, where this is kind of a spoken word kind of style of his poetry, and we've added music under it to enhance the experience. Lively leisure. I enthusiastically enthrall my life of lively leisure, trusting my bold, audacious lore, sailing on my traveler's enlightenment and vacationer's vitality decrees. I treasure every second of my every day with the nerve of a gladiator, love of mother, the heart of lion with soul of eagle and fortitude of a father. Viewing my life through tranquil eyes, while exhaling and inhaling love, lionizing optimistic victorious extravaganzas to celebrate every day with breathtaking vibrancy, hearing my esteemed streaming enterprising eulogies, exciting me, myself, and I to dance with my moneyed up upshots as I gallantly glide, feeling genuine, lauds me into my fun of the sun festivities, unselfishly living my daily life through my heart inspirations, soul savvy and core clarity, beaming my my everlasting classy self-respect through universe's zestful zephyrs. As I declare I am rare, daringly radiating my stylish flair, as I dazzle me with mature skills that thrill my jet setter's enthusiasm in a polite way, as I treasure my life's through profuse pleasure, now and forevermore. And speaking of music, you may be wondering, well, Would I be looking for one piece of music for the entire audiobook, for all the poems, or would I be repeating a song, repeating the music, and wouldn't it get repetitive? Yes, these are all uh, questions that you would be asking. So first of all, I would not generally recommend that you have one piece of music that is running through your entire book of poetry. I would think that you would want to craft it in a way to where the music that you have either is fitting under each poem and you have several pieces of music, some potentially repeating from one poem and then maybe with another poem later in the book if it feels also appropriate there. And you may have a piece of music that runs under a few different poems based on the kind of poetry that you have, the way that you've laid it out in your book. If you have, for example, a section of poems that are supposed to be inspirational, uplifting, you may find that there is a piece of music that could run under that section and be a nice sort of piece that ties them together. All of these are completely variable, and really just what I'm trying to do is to Raise your awareness to the kinds of questions that you would want to ask yourself or ask your audiobook producer so that you know what some of your options are. So you can think through these things and come to a decision. And then this last piece I want to share is just about some other ideas around what else you can do in your book of poetry. So I want to remind you that an audiobook does not need to match your textbook 100%. Yes, you want it to mostly match, but you actually have quite a bit of flexibility in the creation of your audiobook edition. Some possibilities for you to consider would be you might have a short piece about the poem where you're just talking about the poem. 
It might be very anecdotal or conversational. That can lend a kind of intimacy to the poetry that you might enjoy as a poet, sharing your story, sharing that conversation and your feelings about the poem or its history or how it grew. Those are the kinds of things that would typically interest a reader who's interested in your poetry. Other things you could consider very much along that same line would be having a short piece of an interview. And that might be a friend of yours or your audiobook producer, somebody asking you selected questions about the poem they just heard. And this wouldn't have to be necessarily for each and every poem, but there may be some selected poems where this feels like it would be a great fit. Have somebody ask you questions about that poem, and then you can answer those. That can help fill out an audiobook that may otherwise be very short, but you'd like to have a little bit more um, of a narrative experience as a part of the book. So those are just a few ideas for you. And I've spoken mostly about this with the process being that you would be the narrator. For poetry, as I said earlier on, you may want to do that if that feels appropriate to you. But the alternative is to find a producer that will work with you or a narrator that will work with you where you can have the conversation in advance so the narrator knows exactly how to approach that poetry. And that can open the doors to having higher level of performance if performance is not something that is in your comfort zone or skill set. So I think that's it for today. Again, as always, if you have any questions about audiobook production or marketing and would like to reach out to us, you can find us at proaudiovoices.com. We love sharing the experience of audiobooks and the creation of them and would love to talk with you about your project and see if we can be of service. Till next time. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us and please join us next week.